discuss something about the failures, mistakes we made. The thing I feel most thankful is all the mistakes, all the refuse that I got. Because without that, there would never be Alibaba. In the past 18 years, every day we make mistakes. Every day we were rejected. I think being rejected, being refused by people, that is very natural. Why people should help you? You have to prove yourself, then people would help you. Alibaba was not made today. Alibaba was made 18 years ago in my apartment. The believing that using internet empower others, using in internet to help young people, small business and women will have bright future. So it's been 18 years hard working. We came here. <clears throat> today, there are a lot of books about us. I don't read these books because I think this book's not about us. People love to see successful stories, but most of the success stories, they succeed because of the mistakes. I encourage all the young people, entrepreneurs, to learn from the mistakes. Do not study successful stories. Successful, successful stories in the Harvard Business School, normally, you know, there are a lot of things behind you don't know. But if you learn from the mistakes, if you learn, especially the failures case studies, it's going to help you. What I want to say is not about you. You learn from mistakes does not mean you will avoid mistakes. You will learn the attitude towards these mistakes and never give up fighting again. Of course, it's very painful when you are rejected, when you're refused. I went all the around looking for money, nobody gave us money. I all go around looking for partnerships, nobody believed small business and e-commerce in China would work. I was very painful that day and when I saw one movie, Forrest Gump. <laughs> I love that movie, especially the sentence said, mom said life like a box of chocolate, you never know what you're going to get. So stay full, stay foolish to your dream and continue to fight. So this is what we did as an entrepreneur, we never complain. When people complain, the opportunity comes. So if you can solve the complaints, that is your opportunity. So I love to, when I talk to the entrepreneurs, I feel excited when I'm sitting there, listen to the, the entrepreneurs talk. I feel inspired, I feel we are the same animal. The difference between big company and small company is not about revenue, it's about the dream. The small companies have the dreams. Most of the big companies, when they get certain size, they only have KPI. So if you fight only for next quarter, how can you survive in such a turbulent times? You have to believe the future. You have to continue to the future. You have to stay focused. As I said to myself early days, if there are nine rabbits on the ground, if you want to catch the rabbit, don't change the rabbit, change yourself, stick to one rabbit. If you have the dream, stick to the dream. That is what I believe. So this is what I, I want to say is that Alibaba started 18 years ago. We never changed our dream. We believe e-commerce. We believe internet. We believe by helping young people, helping small business, and helping empower women, we will have the future. The, the difference between last century and this century, the difference between IT and DT is IT empower yourself, DT empower others. When you help others, you are helping yourselves. This is what we believe. 18 years ago, 18 people in my apartment. When we had this dream, when we started, everybody say, you guys are crazy. How can you do e-commerce? No infrastructure, no credit system, no logistics, no this, no that. How could you do internet? We say, if there's no logistic, let's build it. If there's no credit system, let's build it. That is why we need, they need entrepreneurs. I remember when we launched the Taobao, what's funny? When we launched Taobao, we thought we're going to have a big business in about one month. But for the first five days, nobody come here even shopping. So the seven colleague employees in my apartment, we have to buy ourselves. He sell, we buy. 
And the first, you know, the first month where somebody came to sell, no matter whatever he sell, we buy them. <laughs> that would tell the seller, the seller said, well, this thing really can be able to sell. So more people come sell. So we bought a whole house of things garbage. They're no use. <laughs> but at least we build up the trust. We start to sell, we start to learn, and we learn the, the experience of selling. We learn experience of the servicing. Today, from nobody, from nothing, we have got from 18 people to 50,000 people. From no, no, nobody come to sell and buy, we got 500 million, more than 500 million users. And every day, 200 million people come to sell and buy on the Alibaba site, on the Timor and Taobao. We sell things not by months. We sell things not by day. We sell things by seconds. And this is not only today. This is the future. I want to tell you 10, 20 years later, all these things will be natural. Every day, things could be that. If you hit the sweet point, if your product's good, if your service good, your products will have a good sell because they're billion. Today, the whole world is about 1.8 billion people online, right? And only less than like 800 million people shopping online. We believe next to 20 years, they were adding another 3 billion people online. And, and next, the next 10, 20 years, 60% of the people will shop online. So e-commerce is just a beginning. And we, by selling no, no revenues and no, nobody come to sell, last year we sold 550 billion US dollars. And for one single day, last year we sold more than 1.8 billion US dollars. Oh no, eight, 18 billion US dollars one day. So this, this thing you can never imagine, but we said 10 years later, Every day, we may sell $18 billion. <laughs> Even at our size today, we still think we are small business because we still have the dreams. We think our mission is helping doing business easier. There are so many small businesses. There are so many developing countries. There are so many opportunities there. There are so many people still not online shopping, online sales. That we should do. So our dream is to make our company the fifth largest economy online. We think in the future there will be a virtual economy that will enable every individual, every small business. They can global sell, global buy, global pay, global deliver and global tour travel around this is what we believe most people seeing is believing but real entrepreneurs and leaders we believe then we see we believe the future then we will see the future so if you believe that you can do it you should continue to do it and wait and fight for at least 80 years if not 18 years the next thing I want to share with you is I think the, the whole world, most of the people in this world much underestimate, underestimate the big impact of this technology is going to bring to the human beings. Well, as I said, when people complain, opportunity comes. The world is, when, when I was young, I complained a lot. I said, hey, you know, Microsoft will take away my job. Oracle will take away our job. Because of IBM, we can never do PCs. So later I realized we should not learn from Bill Gates. We should not learn from Larry Erickson. We should learn from the grandmother next to my door. How can she make her business so good by opening a dumpling shop? Because when you compare yourself to Bill Gates or Jack Ma, you feel frustrated. But if you compare to the next door person, you learn how to do business by details. And human beings today are facing the fifth largest opportunities of human beings. The first technology revolution, the second technology revolution, the first technology revolution released the human, human the, the body, right? The, so we know the machine is more powerful than human beings. And the second technology revolution released the human distance. So the plane, the, the airplanes, and the train all go. But this technology revolution 
release the human brains. People start compete by wisdom, by knowledge, not by muscles. This is why I believe women have much more opportunity and should be the leaderships of this century. It is, it is the competition of care for others. It is the competition of wisdom, not the muscles, right? This is what we believe. And also I would say in every technology revolution takes about 50 years. The first 20 years is about technology. The next 30 years is about implication, application of the technology. Electricity was not invented in America, it was in Europe, but America made it big. Cars was not Im invented in the USA, but USA using car make their country on the wheels. So this is what we think that the past 20 years is about internet technology, uh, internet companies, Amazon, and, and eBay, Facebook, Google, Alibaba, these companies. But these companies may not be necessary, but still be very powerful in the next 10, 20 years if they as not continue to be innovative, if continue to be right, uh, running fast. So who will be the next wave? Those companies, those countries make full use of this technology, make full use of this infrastructure, internet as infrastructure, they will booming. This is what we, we truly believe. So next 30 years are the critical. Those companies who are using this internet technology, data, artificial intelligence, their company will booming. So the other thing is that for, can, for, the, for these new technology comes, everybody be careful. It's a challenge for big companies. It is opportunity for small business. Because big companies, they've been there for, for like 50 or 20 years, They're very successful, they want to protect. For us, small business, we have nothing to lose. So we should learn from scratches, we learn from it. And I believe in the past 18 years of experience, the most difficult thing in this world is to convince successful people. They will tell you, oh no, we've been doing that for years. Don't, don't tell me internet is works. But it's easy and it's good to, to help those people who want to be successful. So helping young people is helping future. Believing young people is believing your future. What we did in the past 18 years, uh, 15 years ago when we launched Taobao, nobody wanted to use Taobao and Tmall. So we tried to convince those people who are 18 years old. They don't have money. They want to buy you know, cheaper things and tiny things. Those people who are 40 years old, they don't buy it. They think, no, 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 we don't like it. So we said, for 18 years people, in, in China in the older days, when we convincing older people, we're convincing young people. But now we're convincing young people, we're convincing older people. So those 18 years old, we wait for them for 10 years. When they are 28, they, are, they will be the future. That is why we have a patience for 15 years ago, we've been waiting for 15 years until today. So that is called a strategy. The next thing I want to talk about the trade. I'm a fully believer of free trade and globalized trade. And I think when trade stops, war starts. So we trade is not buy things. Trade is appreciation of the culture of the other side. How can you stop trade? People are moving very fast. There's one thing for sure. A lot of jobs will be taken away because of the artificial intelligence, because of the robots. Don't worry about that. People say, ah, oh, artificial intelligence is going to control. Machine is going to kill, is going to control human being. Trust me. Human being will never be controlled by machines. We invented the trains and the cars. At that time, we all worry about these cars and trains, electricity. But finally, human being can control that. And I want to tell you that artificial intelligence is going to create a lot of new jobs. But the next 10 years, it's going to be trouble. And I want to say that manufacturing is not going to create a lot of jobs because most of the manufacturing were produced by artificial intelligent robots. The service industry, tourism is going to create a lot of jobs. Service is going to 
is going to create a lot of jobs. But when people don't have jobs, what are people going to do? So a lot of people worry, what are they going to do? I tell you, at that time, most of people will only work four hours a day and three days a week. I say, oh, how can we surviving? I tell you, even if you work four hours a day, three days a week, you will still be very busy. My grandfather working 16 hours a day in the farm. He said, I'm very busy. We work eight hours a day, five days a week. We think we are very busy. So I tell you, we only work four hours a day, you know, three days a week, you will be very busy. You will travel all around. You will always mobile. You will always on the car because normally we only visit 30 cities in our life. 10, 20 years later, you will visit 300 cities in your life. So you're always on the way. When you're always on the way, you're always mobile. When you're all mobile, how can you stop globalization? It's impossible. People love to trade. So remember one thing. The way trading, the formality of trading is completely changed. Normally, small business, big companies go to the trader shows. We small business, we don't have a budget. We cannot get the visas. We cannot have the time to go to the trader shows. The best trader shows is online. In the future, it's not e-commerce, it's e-business. In the future, there will be no made in China, made in America, made in Canada. In the future, most of the products made in internet. You may design here and sell there and, and assemble it here. So all the things next 10, 20 years, the way we do business is totally different. So get ready for that. So the distance is, not a, is no longer be issues. Think about it. The questions we got 15 years ago when we do e-commerce in China, people say, how can you deliver things from Beijing to Shanghai in, a, in, a, in a five days? How, how expensive, what's the cost of delivery? Today, we can deliver Beijing to Shanghai, I mean, like three or four hours. Within 24 hours, most of the cities in China will be covered. Most of big cities, half an hour will be covered. Our vision is that in next 10 years, most of the countries in the world will be 72 hours. So distance is no longer the issue. Sell things from Toronto to Chicago, there's no difference between Toronto to Chicago and Toronto to Shanghai. Everything will be delivered within 72 hours. Because of the new supply chains, things could be even much efficient, more efficient. Things could be much more cost effective. So this is what we believe the future. This is what we believe internet, e-payment, logistic systems, data is gonna change the whole world. A lot of jobs is losing, a lot of new jobs are coming up. And I want to tell you that for all these small business entrepreneurs, remember one thing, 80% of the small business in the future must be globalized. If you are not globalized the company, you will never be able to survive easily. And if you do not use the internet to globalize, not the necessary Alibaba. If you do not use the internet to globalize your business, you will not have a chance. If you do not know C2B, because last century manufacturing is about a B2C. In the future, it's got a C2B, consumer to business. So all the model is going to change. Every small business, all the young people here, think globally think a bit right you only in the future in the past you only do things in your if you do things in your only small county your small tiny business small business can leverage the internet technology leverage the market go across the board think big and think out of the boundary this is a prime minister i absolutely agree with that so it's say never too late never too late to learn to that internet is just the beginning E-commerce is just the beginning. The good thing about the young people is that we always keep learning. One of the reasons people say, what's the secret of China grow so fast? One of the things that we Chinese learn very much in the past 30, we learn a lot about America. If you today go to New York, 
pick up 100 Americans on the street, how many of them can speak more than 10 Chinese words? Very few. If you in Beijing, Shanghai, you grasp 100 young people and ask them how many of them can speak more than 20 English words, 80 of them. That is you learn. When you appreciate, when you're open-minded, when you learn from others, you make progress. So this is, I think, never too late to learn the internet. Internet technology is just the beginning. People like me, I know nothing about technology. The only thing I can use my computer, thanks because of the mobile, I don't have to learn computers. The PC, the only thing I can send, receive emails and browse. But I believe technology is designed for people. People should not for just for technology, for technology reasons. The third, the, the next point I want to make, talk about China. China changed so much. It's, it's amazing. We've got 1.4 billion people and we got 800 million people online and 500 million people already online shopping. So we still have 900 million people on the way to online shopping. So there are about 300 million middle class and we have 130 million people travel outside China every year. Guys, imagine, can you imagine 130 million people travel all around the world? It's a moving country. <laughs> Today, we have a 300 million middle class. We are soon going to have five, more than 500 million middle class. You have any ideas how many chickens Chinese people eat every year? We eat more than 7 billion chickens every year. It's like the population of a human being. Like. We eat more than 600 million pigs every year. So it's a huge, huge demand. And nobody believed the, 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 the logistic package delivery. We today in China deliver over 80 million packages every day. And on the singlest day last year, we created 650 million packages in one day. We believe 10 years later, every day there will be 1 billion, 1 billion packages. This is all the things that is happening. And I want to say that for Canada, past 50 years, USA is the market. Today, China is the market. Today, China think 300 million middle class is bigger than total American population. And it's just the beginning. So please learn to business online with Chinese. People say, ah, doing Chinese business with Chinese is very difficult. Let me tell you, doing business with any people is difficult. Right? But there's one thing, why I love a you know, I, why I like a Canada products. I have a Canada goose and a lot of, uh, my wife buy a lot of uh, stuff from Canada. You have 1.5 million Chinese community here. These are your ambassadors of your products. They are telling every Chinese, oh, the environment, the beauty, the products. So we should leverage that and I think if you cannot do business with the Chinese, it will be difficult for you guys to do business with the other nations. That's what I believe. And you have to learn to business doing things online. As I said, online business, that is not that difficult. The only is build up the trust and one key element, one of the secret source of Alibaba's success is we have close to 50% of employees are women. At the internet time, women, because they care others more than they themselves, they, the usability is so good, they're online, they care for the others, so most of the, we have a more than 47, 48% of employees of our company are women. We have 33% of the senior management are women. These people, they consider the others. So online time, e-commerce time, when you do business, cross the ocean, cross the board, I would say, think out of the box. And 
So this is something I want to say. Doing business in China, learn to do that. When you know how to do business with China, you will definitely learn how to do business with Southeast Asia because we share the same culture. And also in the next 10, 20 years, if you do not know how to do online business, it's going to be just like 10 years ago. If you do want to do international trade, you don't know how to speak English, it's tough. But of course, when you know how to speak English, it does not mean you can do good business. The other thing that I want to talk about is globalization is opportunity for everybody. I think globalization is only a baby. Past 20 years, the globalization, especially the trade, is controlled by 60,000 big companies. The world was 2080. A lot of companies, the 20%, and you know, they just focus on 20%, the big companies and developed countries. We believe the world should be inclusive. Globalization should be inclusive. Young people should have the opportunity. Small business should have opportunity. We hope that every government have free trade zones for small business. There are a lot of free trade zones, but they're all designed for big companies. If we encourage the small business to import, export, they should have the same rights like any big companies within 24 hours custom clearance. This is what we think. We should also have the same all kinds of tax privilege for small business and this is what we believe and every country should pay special attention to the 30 next 30 years pay special attention to those young people who are below 30 years old pay special attention to those companies who have less than 30 employees by the way let me tell you 30 employees in the industrial time is a small business on the digital time they are huge big companies so, I want encouraging everybody here that using internet, do business with China. And whether you do business with, through Alibaba or eBay or Amazon or whatever, that is okay. This is the skill every small business must have. And if you want to open the huge market, China is the market. If you cannot find your customer from 1.4 billion people, you really have a big problem there. Right. So, if it is a big market, it is the way to do business, why not have a try? Don't be afraid, don't be scared. Today, we do business, it is much easier than 1,000 years ago, our ancestors. It took eight years for Marco Polo from Italy to China and 80 years from China back to Italy. Today, it only takes less than eight seconds. You can go to China one million times. Think about, it. at that time, they're so dangerous on the road, today, not that. Don't worry too much about IP, counterfeit, don't worry about privacy, security, Human beings have ways to solve these problems. Don't worry about artificial intelligence is going to kill our jobs. Artificial intelligence, new technology will create a lot of jobs. We don't have a solution, but there is a solution. We don't have a solution, young people have solutions. Early days when electricity was invented, people worry about that will kill a lot of jobs. People worry about that will kill a lot of lives. We know how to control that. So be confident as an entrepreneur, as a small business. Have a dream, stick your dream, and be full to your dreams, and believe the future. And hire as many young people as possible because they are ne never scared. Today, the world is full of scary. People, oh my, this, that, that. Young people never scared. What they scare is they scare about us. We make wrong decisions. We make the wrong policies. We kill their future. So trust the young people. Trust the small business. Build environment. Build the ecosystem for them. This is our future. And please, take one thing. Alibaba will be honored and loved to be the gateway to China. Alibaba will be the gateway to the global market. Our mission, why Alibaba? Why we call Alibaba? Of course, Alibaba is easy to spell everywhere in the world. You, you pronounce the same. 
the other thing is open sesame. We believe internet is a treasure island. We should open sesame for everybody, every small business, and every young people. So please take Alibaba as the gateway. We want to enable every small business. We, without a small business, without young people, without women, there will be no Alibaba today. So we will continue to do that, and we'll continue to work with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.